Okay, so now we are ready to wrap up this discussion on backpropagation. We'll take everything that we have done so far and put it together into a nice algorithm. Uh, so why we have all the pieces of the puzzle? So we have we have the derivative of the loss function with respect to the output layer. We have the derivative of the loss function with respect to any hidden layer activation and pre-activation. We have the derivative of the loss function with respect to the weights and the biases, right? Now we can write all of this into a full learning algorithm. So this is what it looks like. I'm going to start with the gradient descent algorithm. So you had start at time step zero, you run it for some thousand iterations, you initialize all the weights in the network. At every stage, what will you do? You will first compute all the activations and all the, actually it should have been the other way around, all the pre-activations and the activations and the output using the forward pass, right? And you know the formula for this, right? You start with X, you compute A1 as W1 X plus B, and you compute H1 as G of A1, then you compute A2 as W2 H1 plus B and so on, right? So this all is simple matrix vector multiplication. There are no gradients involved. This is just taking the input and passing it through a series of transformations. And all of this is coming from a formula that you can implement, right? You know how to implement these formulas, right? You know how to implement this. You know how to compute the element wise uh, logistic, for example, if G is equal to the logistic function. Okay, so this is straightforward. You'll just do a forward propagation on the input, right? This should have been uh, comma X, right? Because you're taking the input. Also. Now, once you have done the forward propagation, you do the backward propagation. So once you have done the forward propagation, you compute Y hat. You also know Y, right? So using that, you can compute the loss function, okay? Loss function depends on Y hat and Y. And you will need, <coughs> All of these things, right, they were showing up in the back propagation formula that you had seen, right? So you will see that again. So all of these quantities you will need, right? So everything that you have computed in the forward propagation, you will need it in the backward propagation also. And what is the output of the backward propagation? It's the derivative of the loss function with respect to all the weights in the network. And I'm just collectively calling it as a derivative of the loss function with respect to theta, whereas the theta is a large collection of weights. Once you have that, you can just update the weights using the gradient descent update rule. So now let's zoom into the forward propagation and the backward propagation, right? So this is the forward propagation. For k equal to 1 to L minus 1, this is what you will do. You will compute AK as, so A1 is equal to B1 plus WK, W1 into H0 and H0 as I had said is going to be equal to X, right? And then once you have that, you can compute HK as the, uh, by applying the activation function on the AK vector. So this is all. You just need to run this loop L minus one times and what happens to the Lth uh, layer? There you will first compute uh, AL, okay? I just computed, I just put the uh, output layer outside because for the output layer you need to use a spatial function, you don't use the same G function, right? That's why I put it out. So now you have computed everything. You have computed the activations for all the layers, including the output layer, activations and pre-activations and then you have computed the output also. And this is all you need to compute the loss so if you have y hat, you can also compute the loss, right? Uh, <coughs> so once you do the forward propagation, you have all the H's, all the A's and the y hat. Now you start doing the backward propagation. So first, what will you do? You will compute the gradient with respect to the output layer. And this is what our formula was. Now this you already know because you have computed in the forward propagation. This is just the one hot vector where there will be a one in the correct class and this you know from the training data, right? You know for this example, what is the correct class, right? So this entire algorithm is run for one example for now, okay? One input X. So for that input, you know what the Y vector is and that's why you can compute the one hot vector, okay? So this you know. Now from K equal to, this is actually wrong, sorry. This should have been L minus one to one, right? Because you always start from the last layer and keep going on to the first layer. So you compute the gradients with respect to the parameters. I want to compute the derivative of the loss function with respect to the parameter in the last layer, right? So this is k equal to L minus one to one is what you're doing, right? So I want to compute the derivative of the loss function. Yeah, so now you want to compute the derivative of the loss function with respect to the weights in the last layer, which is W3. So this will be uh, from L, uh, going from L to 1, right? So W3, uh, which will depend on 
the derivative of the loss function with respect to A3 and uh, H2, right. So, this you have already computed in the forward pass, this you have already computed, this is just computed outside the loop. So, you have all the elements that you require to compute this, right. Similarly, you can compute the derivative of the loss function with respect to the weights in the layer 3. So, this also you can do because you just need this quantity which you have already computed because k is equal to L right now. We are running the loop from L to 1, okay. So, this is done. Now, you compute the gradients with respect to the layer below. So, now you can compute uh, the derivative of the loss function with respect to k, uh, <coughs> k minus 1. So, you had started with k equal to L to 1, right. So, now at this point uh, k is equal to L. So, k minus 1 would be L minus 1, so which would be H2. So, you are computing the derivative of the loss function with respect to H2 and for that you need the weights W3 which you already have and you need the derivative of the loss function with respect to A3 which again you already have, right. So, this I already explained this when I was saying that you are just going step by step and then you compute the gradients with respect to the uh, uh, pre-activation uh, layer below. So, this is what you want to compute and for that you just need this quantity which you had just computed and this quantity which you have already argued is easy to compute, right. So, you just this loop just keeps going on and on till the first layer and you just keep computing all the, uh, the, 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 the gradients with respect to all the weights, all the activations, all the pre-activations, all the biases in the network. So, this entire loop you could write in Python. You first do the forward propagation, then do the backward propagation. So, we have the formula for all the weights. It does not matter which W1, W2, W3, the same formula applies. Similarly, we have the formula for all the pre-activations, all the activations and all the pre-activations. So, we just keep applying this formula inside a loop, right. So, I do not have to do this painful computation where I am trying to compute the derivative of the loss function with respect to every weight W k i j or W 3 1 comma 2, W 3 2 comma 2 and so on, right. I just have a generic formula. I am just doing matrix operations and I get the derivatives with respect to all the weights, right. So, that is what is the entire back propagation algorithm is coded in just this, these many uh, steps, right, a very small loop and all of these are matrix vector multiplications. So, we are almost done. One uh, last thing that was left was uh, uh, the derivatives of the, <coughs> the G primes, right, which I did not uh, cover. So, I, I already told you it is easy to do. So, this is our GZ. So, if it is the logistic function, then this is what it is and this is how you can compute uh, G prime. So, this is what you will do, right. So, you can again write a function to compute G prime, it takes any value as input. Uh, uh, so, you are computing H is equal to G of A, right. So, you just pass that A and you substitute in this formula. So, you get G dash, right. That is all that this says. And in fact, it can be written even more uh, simply. It is just G of Z into 1 minus G of Z. You can derive this, this is not and similarly for this you can derive and it is just 1 minus g of z square, right. So, those g primes are easy to compute. Uh, <coughs> uh, so, that is all I had. So, if I got this formula is saying, right. So, if I had uh, h already, right and if I want to compute uh, g then I already have uh, g prime then I already have everything that I wanted to uh, compute, right. So, this is all we are done with the entire back propagation algorithm. Uh, we have seen it in quite uh, gory details. Uh, you have to watch these videos a few times to get a complete grasp on it, but everything that you need to understand it is there in the videos and the slides. Uh, so, please look at it. So, I will end here and in the next class we will go back to gradient descent and look at a few variants of gradient descent. Thank you.